I had the Garmin Vivo Active 3 smartwatch for a long time. I think it's been about 5 years since I bought it. It worked great for a while, but eventually the battery life started to decline more and more. I reached to the point where I had to disable the constant phone connection and heart rate sensor, minimize the brightness to 10% and it still would only last for about less than 10 hours. This has to be fixed. So I decided to upgrade the battery. In this video I will share my story of how I did it and explain step by step how to do the same. Perhaps it will be helpful to someone as well. So let's get started. And before we start, if you're new to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button. This will help me a lot to grow my channel. I'll bring you more helpful, interesting repair and other quality content. Also smash the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And of course, if you find this video helpful, give it a like. I appreciate it very much. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's go. First, let's talk about the tools we're gonna need. We will require a very thin but rigid metal pry bar that will allow us to get into the groove between the top part of the smartwatch and the main case body. Alternatively, you might use a small flat screwdriver, but it's better to use a proper tool. Since this smartwatch is water resistant, it has a special adhesive sealant holding the parts together. To open it up, we will need some sort of heat source to warm up the adhesive and then use the pry bar to open it up without breaking the body. I'm going to use a construction heat gun with a temperature regulator. It's crucial to have temperature control to avoid applying excessive heat to the smartwatch. In my case, the temperature is controlled by the dial on the back and honestly, it is not very accurate. I had to double check the actual temperature with my multimeter and it was showing different temperatures all the time at the same setting. However, this is a pretty cheap heat gun, so you get what you pay for. You can also use a regular hair dryer for this purpose if you have one. You will also need a small Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of tweezers and a plastic pry bar. In my case, I needed more tools, but that's only if you go through the same upgrade as I did. And of course, don't forget about safety and use safety goggles to protect your eyes. Normally, one would need a proper replacement battery for the Garmin Vivo Active 3, which you can still find online. However, in my case, due to some unforeseen logistic problems, I wasn't able to get one. On the other hand, I ended up with a higher capacity battery, but more on that later. Initially, I thought that if the original Garmin battery or its replacement from Cameron Sino is 160 mAh and has dimensions of 22.5 by 20.5 by 4.5 mm, I would need to look for a battery with these dimensions or smaller. I couldn't find a battery with 160 mAh capacity and dimensions matching the original battery size. So I started looking for a battery with a lower capacity, assuming it should also be smaller in size. I found a battery with only 80 mAh and dimensions of 11 by 19 by 4 mm. I thought, well, if the new original battery should last around 7 days when it's new, the 80 mAh battery, which is only half of the capacity of the original one, should last at least 2-3 days. And that would be way better than what I had at the moment. So I proceeded with the repair using this battery. This new battery doesn't come equipped with the proper connector for the Garmin watch and only has flying leads. We will need to cut off the connector from the original battery and solder it to the new battery. By the way, I'm also using a silicone repair pad that can withstand high temperatures and somewhat protect your desk. Let's first go ahead and remove the straps and turn the watches off. I have set the temperature of the heat gun and measured it to be around 80 degrees Celsius. You need to move the heat gun around to avoid pointing it in one spot for a prolonged period as it might cause damage to the display or internal circuit board. I was mostly worried about the display. Anyway, heat it up for 2-3 minutes. It all depends on the temperature of the heat source. The higher the temperature, the less time one needs to apply it. But don't go too high. Afterward, try to stick the thin metal pry bar in the groove between two body case parts. Keep in mind, it does require some force to be applied to pry it up, 
The more it's heated up, the easier it will open up. But of course, you don't want to overheat it. If it doesn't open up, try to apply heat for longer or increase the temperature and leave the time the same and try again. You can try different nozzles for the heat gun. Maybe a more concentrated one would work better. Once you get the pry bar in, go all around and lift up the top part. Here we can see the internal circuit board of the smartwatch and the battery. We need to unplug the connecting cables and disconnect the display part. After that, we get a better view of the PCB and the battery. As you can see, it is an original battery. There are three screws that need to be removed to take out the PCB and access the battery connector. After removing the three screws, lift up the PCB and remove it from the case. It is a pretty cool looking tiny PCB with lots of different components. Now it's time to remove the battery, and that became the most challenging part of this repair, ending up much more complicated than I thought it would be. The battery is glued to the case, but the glue is not very strong and is only there to keep the battery in place, so it's removed with a little effort. After that, one simply needs to pull out the battery connector, and that's it. It even says push on the connector, I'm not sure if it means to push when connecting or disconnecting but most likely when connecting, as pushing when disconnecting wouldn't work. I thought maybe there is a tiny tab to push on and then pull the connector, but nothing worked. After watching a few videos on YouTube, I found that no one showed the process of actually disconnecting the battery, except for one video in which it just magically popped out. So after that, I thought, well, I definitely need to pull harder to disconnect it, but somehow, Either because it was stuck or maybe I rushed too fast or didn't do it properly, I ended up ripping out the cables from the connector. I thought I shouldn't have pulled the connector out in the first place and should have just cut the wires and soldered a new battery to them. But sadly it was too late and I thought the watch was done. By the way, I needed to solder the cables from the new battery to this connector anyway because it didn't come with one. So be cautious when disconnecting the battery and try not to repeat my mistake. But what's done is done. We need to move on. It is a very small connector, way smaller than it appeared in the video because it's zoomed up. I don't know the type or series of the connector it is. Potentially I could have figured out the type of the connector it is, ordered them, got the proper crimping tool for this connector, cleaned up the remaining part of the old connector still stuck there and fixed it this way but it would be a long process, and I don't have either these connectors or tools to crimp them. I noticed that if I put these connector terminals back in place and find the way to fix them in a position so they don't move, they still work fine and don't short circuit. So I decided to give it a try and cut off these ripped out connector terminals from the old battery and solder them on my new battery, which I did, also protecting it with a shrink slip. To avoid any movement of the terminals, I used a drop from a silicone glue gun which actually worked out well. I also removed some tiny puny PCB that was close to where I was working to avoid damaging it. But I noticed that it had some sort of crack already. I wasn't sure if it was like that or if I accidentally broke it. Now with the new battery in place and connected, it's time to put the main circuit board back in, reattach all the cables and see if it's working. Since this battery is much smaller than the original one, it fits very well. Let's go ahead and power it on. And voila, it's working. It shows the battery charge at 25%. Let's charge it and see how long it will last. And remember that brand new lithium and lithium poly batteries need to be fully discharged and charged at least once to achieve their full capacity. 
Unfortunately, somehow the battery was discharging way quicker than I thought. And after the first charge, it only lasted like for 3 hours or less. It was discharging drastically and even after a few battery cycles, it was still happening. I wasn't sure if it was a faulty battery or a bad connection, but I thought it's over. If this battery doesn't even last a full day, this watch goes to scrap. After a few days, I was thinking about why it was discharging so quickly and it hit me an idea to remove that tiny puny PCB that seemed broken to me and try it without it. So I removed the tiny PCB, reassembled everything back, charged the battery to full and started waiting. Eureka! It wouldn't discharge fast anymore. On the contrary, it actually lasted almost 60 hours on one charge. That means if the 80 mAh battery lasted for almost 60 hours and the original 160 mAh battery lasted for only 10 hours, thus after simple calculations, the original battery had only about 13-14 mAh capacity left from its original capacity, so it lost over 90% of its original capacity. But anyway, this was a victory. Now I was ready to continue and reassemble the watch completely. However, on the next day another thought hit me. Since this watch was released in 2017, the battery technology might have improved somewhat. So I decided to see if there are any batteries that have even higher capacity than the original, but still in the same form factor. And surprise, I actually found a battery almost double the capacity that can fit into the same space as the original battery. This new battery is 300 mAh and its dimensions are 20 by 20 by 4 mm. As you can see, it's even a tiny bit smaller than the original Garmin battery, but almost twice the capacity. So of course, I decided to install it instead of this 80 mAh battery. It was quite a challenge to remove the heat shrink and resorted the new 300 mAh battery. I used the thinnest soldering iron tip that I had because wires are so small. Before installing the new battery, I checked the voltage to make sure it's working and the voltage was 3.85 volts, so it's pretty full. This 300 mAh battery has almost exactly the same dimensions as the original one, so it fits just right. I'm going to put everything together to make sure it's all working fine and then finish the assembly.
At first the battery only shows 28% charged but everything else is working. I'm going to charge it to 100% and then let it fully discharge and charge it once more to 100%. One odd thing that I've noticed is that when it's charging it goes normal and then suddenly jumps to 100%. According to the USB tester it's consuming 5V at approximately 20mAh. However when it reaches 160mAh the charging is stopped even though the battery capacity is 300 milliamp hour. So it's like a little more than half full. This in turn means that the overall battery life will be extended twice as much because only 60% of the battery life is used at any given time. Also when it's discharging it could go down as normal and then at 2% and 1% it can stay for like few days. Actually it was staying for at least couple days at 1%. I'm not sure what that would mean but when upgrading to a higher capacity battery the smartwatch may not be accurately calibrated to the new battery specifications. Calibration involves device learning how the battery behaves over charge and discharge cycles. If it's not properly calibrated it can lead to inaccurate percentage readings. It could also be some software limitations. The software of the smartwatch may not be optimized to handle a battery of higher capacity. But anyway after a few charges. I get to know approximately how many days the battery should last. As for the battery life on this new 300 mAh battery, charged with only 160 mAh, the watch lasts around 170 hours, which is a little bit more than 7 full days. But that's with the heart rate sensor turned off and the phone connection off. With similar settings the 80 mAh battery lasted for around 60 hours. Finally as per the official specs on the Garmin website, the 160 mAh battery life of the Garmin Vivo Active 3 is around 7 days. So indeed we get in 7 days of better life with this new battery but the life cycle of the battery should be twice as long. For the final assembly we'll need a multi-purpose adhesive. I'm using B7000. You need to fill up the groove with the glue all around then put it together and press tightly. Also be careful when closing the two parts together as there is a little notch on both parts. They need to be aligned otherwise the case won't fully close. It might be hard to see but it's very important. Also make sure that the hole is clean as there might be still some leftovers from the previous adhesive. If there is any excessive glue that comes out, wipe it off. After we put it together, let's turn it on and make sure everything is working before the glue dries up. And yeah, as you can see, it's all functional like new. After that we need to apply some constant force while the glue dries up. I have used a metal chunk to press on it for a few hours to give it some good pressure and then used the clamp and left it like that for 48 hours. I think the clamp might have been just enough and the metal chunk is an overkill. But anyway it's all done and the watch is back to life with the new 300 mAh battery that lasts much longer and I can still continue to use this watch for a while. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was interesting to you. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please take a second to click the subscribe button. It will help me a lot to grow my channel and bring you more interesting and quality content. Click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And if you have any comments or questions, drop them down in the comment section below. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye bye.